Okay. So my name is Tom Chesta. I'm here to give you an update on my project scrutiny. Um, just a quick recap of what it is. It's open source plagiarism detection for software code. Uh, it works by tokenizing input files and constructing hash values based on the actual code structure rather than just certain keywords. Uh, it supports a vast multitude of languages, more than any given instructor should need. Um, the original idea was by Rob Scriva. Uh, he's now a PhD candidate at Cornell, and he's been mentoring me on this project this summer. Um, so this was my schedule. This is what I said I was going to get done. Uh, I was going to be able to ignore instructor code, have a database to store open source projects, their fingerprints, and by the end of the support, by the end of the month, support back assignments that, for a reason, the instructor didn't want to add to the database. And then August was going to be spent adding several open source projects to the database. Oh, well, where am I? Um, this. is what it was looking like when I last showed it to you. Uh, apparently includes weren't showing up properly. There's no IO stream where there should be. Um, and it's just going through the entire thing. It had no context of what an instructor gave out versus what the student gave. And the only way to tell how similar they were was to actually look at what was highlighted. This is what it is now. Um, in the top left, it actually gives you out of this student's unique fingerprints, this many were found in the other authors. This is how similar they were. Um, the little bug about includes has been fixed. Uh, any special HTML characters, they're now escaped out of, so they actually show properly. In addition, instructor code is now ignored. Anything the instructor hands out just gets ignored from all the projects, isn't added to the database, anything like that. And there's other stuff that I can't actually show in just the output. So I've added the ability to ignore instructor code. I've fixed various bugs in the output. Um, the process for actually collecting fingerprints has been optimized. It's quite a bit faster now. I looked at code I had written months ago and thought, what was I doing? And fixed it and support for back assignments have been added. Uh, assignments that the instructor didn't want to put in the database for other people to search through. That's now separate and can support it. You can have a bit of privacy if you're on a machine that's being shared across multiple instructors. Uh, and in addition, the database is now working. It's implemented in SQLite 3 because it ships with the Python standard library and scrutiny's performance needs aren't all that high. And it has the option now to just add something straight to the database. You don't have to worry about any comparisons being made, just write in. So it's very easy to copy stuff off what, Stack Overflow, Wikipedia, and dump it straight in. Um, so what's left? Um, due to the way the database is actually working, it wants to have stuff in the database and have the files on hand so it can highlight. I've realized that it would probably be a nightmare to have like a default database shipping, so you have to have the file along with all the source code for what's in the database, and in addition, it's one means fits all for everyone. I'd rather have the user be able to pick and choose what they want uh, student's code to be compared to. I'm also adding support for removing assignments from the database, probably by the end of probably by the end of next week, if not sooner. So if you decide, oh, I don't want that project in, it gives you a mean, uh, means of removing it rather than just deleting the database and starting over. And then I want to, in the coming weeks or two, to do more safety checks and optimizations. I've been so concerned about getting the code to run and to run uh, correctly rather than, you know, error exceptions if a file doesn't have permissions to be open, so on and so forth. So that's everything I'd like to get done by the end of the summer, and I think I can. Now, are there any questions or suggestions about what I should do or what I am doing? How extensive have you tested your code so far? Uh, so far, not all that extensive. I just have uh, an old homework from data structures that me and a friend of mine did that I'm comparing. I don't have much more test data than that. So if anyone wants to donate uh, data, <laughs> you know, I'm all for it. 
can really uh, stress test how fast it runs. The drop is three mark time. What's the what's the key for the uh, instructor for one of the classes like that? Wrong? Yes. Uh, well, I'm not sure if it was an instructor or not. I can talk to him about uh, that. But then yes, like, yeah, and whether or not you can actually distribute, I'm sure there's there might be privacy concerns. Well, probably not. I mean, I have, say, access to six years' worth of data structure and assignments, but I can't give them out. But maybe we can talk about testing. Okay. Have you done any, are you familiar with um, other plagiarism detection software? Um, I haven't used it, but I've heard about Moss and I think it was JFLAP. I have the second one, but yeah, use Moss. Okay. So, so we, there is a comparison <laughs> to see it, but again, we have to be careful about putting it out. Alright, I mean, I don't need names or anything like that, just the actual yeah, code. I don't know, uh, the handout code. No. <laughs> or copy and paste the, the actual code, scrutiny, and run it and see what it spits out. Someone wants to volunteer to be an undergrad TA for data structures next semester. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about that. Who's been a TA before? Once again. Do we get paid now? Out <laughs> of our control. Out of our control. And I think it's terrible. It's May work for data. Please. We'll work for data. Yeah. Well, it's probably one of these things where, you know, you can play with it, but you can't publish it or you know, So. Oh, I have no, idea. no means yeah. to uh, yeah. want to just distribute code yeah. just to see if it works beyond <laughs> two assignments. Well, then if you can round up a group of 20 people and they all give permission, I can go get their assignments from data structures. Okay. Yes? You mentioned that you uh, are tokenizing your inputs and that you also support a lot of languages. Did you write a separate tokenizer for each thing that you support for input files? Or? Um, the library that I'm using, Pigment, um, it has a tokenizer for all the different languages. It lexes it into its different parts, and I'm dependent on that. But even though I'm dependent on it, it also has a lot of flexibility and ability for people to contribute flexors and tokenizers, all that stuff. Oh, nice. Anyone else? Yeah. So you, you, the finally you have to have something like false positive, false negative, true positive, true negative. So some, how many test cases? So that 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 would be a useful information as an output of how, how well you are. And you probably would how? want to compare to say Moss in that regard, right? Yeah. How, how many assignments did Moss say you were probably achieving, and how many of those did you identify in the same way? Yeah. Right now, the threshold for cheating is 25 percent. If more than 25 percent of the unique code fragments are the other person's, that's where it's considered cheating. You should probably add. Oh, if it's over 50, yeah, this is, I'm more we sure. Find, we find actually for the homework, it kind of depends on homework. Sometimes the percentage, yeah. there's, there's no hard cutoff. Because actually, uh, the one I've been using is uh, data, data structures assignment for implementing string two different ways. One using lists, where there's not a lot of wiggle room with how to implement it and have it work. Based on more open, broad assignments. Anyone else? Okay.